All right, here we are back now with exercise number 14. So we're going to do our setup, our full setup, and continue to do that so you get used to that. I want you to be able to do that um, and understand the fundamental four setup completely and fully. So later on when you don't do all that, just relax, sketching, it becomes a part of your drawing practice. The integrity of that is um, in the eight in you because it already is, but you want to be aware of it. So that's that. So exercise 14, we'll do a table, we'll do some books and one large rug uh, in a room and we won't, we'll just dispense of um, the drawing the big room part of it and we'll just start with a rug, two point rug and we'll do a one point table and, and add to this and then we'll go on to the last exercise which will be 15. All right, so I've got my paper right here. I've got my T-square uh, T lined up. So let's put the horizon line a little higher up than the center of your paper. I'm gonna, since we'll use, we'll keep everything in, in the ground plane. So I'm gonna bring it up a little higher. Uh, actually about right in here, it looks pretty good. I've got an 18 by 24 inch piece of paper. So if you have a smaller paper, just draw accordingly. If it's 14 by 17, okay. Sliding my drawing board across. It's good sometimes to show this part of it. I'll pull in later so you can see deeper, but again, this is how I'm working my drawing. All right, so horizontal line all the way across. I'll bring it through. And because my T-square is a little short, or I keep the paper a little outward, it doesn't reach all the way across, and so I'll go ahead and draw that line all the way across. Now remember, that's fundamental aspect number two. That's our eye level, which is also uh, the case for our horizon line. And we won't deal with any elevation here. We'll just deal with um, ground, some ground line measuring. Now, across the piece of paper, it's 24 inches, so I'll put our center of vision uh, again at 12. Let me get my measurements right on there. So 12 in the center. So if you're using a 17 inch piece of paper, that'd be eight and a half. You get the idea. Just put it, put it in the center. So there's 12 right there. So that's our center of vision. And that will also be our one point vanishing point. So now I'll come across here, get my T square and my triangle, and we'll put our center of vision all the way through. And down below, I'll just move that T-square up a little bit so I can put, get my trusty triangle lined up here. Just remember to be accurate, slow it down. All right, so there we go, so we have that. Okay, so one thing I can show you a little bit, and we'll, I'll talk about this at a more distinct time later on. I'll, I'll move this out of the way. Now we have our two, we, right? We have our center of vision, CV for center of vision. That's our first fundamental. Our second is our eye level. That's number two. And then our third is our station point in the cone that it makes. Let me say something about station points, is that the closer we move them to the center point here or the eye line, the narrower the cone gets. And at the farther back we get of our station point, right? the larger our cone gets. So what's, what does that represent? So if we're talking about flapping up our two-dimensional station point up, looking straight in onto this scene, a further station point away from our eye line, horizon line, means that we're further back in feet or scale or distance from our picture plane that we're drawing from. There. A little cup of coffee there. All right, so that's important to to realize. And so um, I'm going to put the station point a little further out because I want to make a little bit larger table. Maybe it won't be so such a realistic seal. I don't really care. What I want to do is just open up my cone of vision a little bit further so we can get a few more items in a little bit wider. Now one thing you can do if you want to set your cone of vision, you could say, hey, I want my cone of vision to be this wide, or I want it to be this wide. And so if you put, like say for instance, you wanted it to be right here, then you just take your 30 degree ruler, or excuse me, your um, 
your triangle and you line it up to that point there and then you line it up on your center vision line and your station point would be right here. What if you wanted your cone of vision to be this far out? Could I even get it out that far? I can't even get it out that far. So the furthest I could get it for now would be out to there. So my station point would be way down here, meaning that the cone would be equal distance over here. That'd be a pretty big cone, which is cool too. I think I'll put, we'll do it that way. We'll put our cone right here. So I'll do it a little bit different way than setting my station point first. I'll say, I want a fairly big cone. I want it to be about this size before I even set in my station point. And so I'll do that and then I'll set in my compass. Let's see if my compass will even fit this. Yeah, I think it will. Barely, but it will. So I'll set up my compass with the metal edge and the center point, and then I'll bring my graphite edge in to about the right there. There's where it fits. Okay, and then I'll come over, and then I'll put our cone in. Right through here. Remember, it's inside the cone that we get relatively little distortion. You know, a lot of people talk about this, and this is worth a discussion later on amongst my students at NKU, but yourself out there. Um, a lot of people think that perspective, using linear perspective, they have so much distortion. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I think I talked about that in the first long lecture, how to see what the problem is. People don't realize that their cone is too small that's the problem relative to their drawing. You can build a nice drawing in through here and then blow that drawing up to any size that you want. You know, if this was, this is 18 by 24, in here might be seven inches by eight inches, whatever. And then you could blow this drawing up into a big canvas that's five feet by eight feet if you wanted, etc., and make it look like you just went in through here. And so you didn't want the distortion out here. You draw what's in here as a thumbnail sketch, sketch correctly, and then you recreate that drawing in your much larger scale. So that's what this is for to help you out. Remember, it's a creative tool. All right, so we created our cone of vision, which is our fourth fundamental. Now we need a third one as our station point. So we come down at 30 degrees and just line up my triangle on the degree mark, but then it's got to come in where it lines up nice and straight here on the center of vision. And where those connect together, they line up. I'll come on down, and yep, you guessed it. There's our station point right there. So we'll put our little person, male or female, depending on your gender. And there's our shoulder. Looking, we're looking straight down. There's a little buttock in the back and the feet is if we're looking straight down on that person because we flap that up, that's us, and so we flap that up until it arrives right parallel, aligned to like sight lines on a telescope, there and there, okay? And so now we have our mark for our cone, and I'll just draw this other part of our cone. And so that's our cone of vision, there's our station point. And so we tell ourselves, where we can draw in without a lot of a large major degree of distortion. I think that's very, very appropriate and um, fundamental to obviously how we see. And so we're set up now. Okay, so the first thing I want to put in, let's put in a two point rug. Let's put in a big rug. Uh, on the ground plane, it's going to be two points, right? And so 90 degrees is going to come through us as a station point. Then we're going to put a table um, on top of that rug, sitting down on the floor, and then we're going to put some books. And you could put some still lifes. Maybe we'll put a chair, still life objects too, as well. So the first thing we want is how big is that rug? Well, maybe we'll keep the rug relatively close to inside our cone. So this is all totally creative. So I could. I could think, okay, maybe I want my, the angle of my rug to be kind of here, in and out of the cone, something like that. Okay, maybe I want that angle and that's going to fit. I'm thinking about how that's going to work up and through here. And so I'll show you the, the, the good and bad of this and see if I can keep everything in completely in my picture plane, number one. So here's the angle of the rug I want that goes back. That's going to be the left vanishing point for my rug 
in my room. We're not going to draw the room. We're just going to draw objects in that. So there's the there's there's that. Then here's where it's going to end. Now I need a vanishing point over here. How do I do that? Well, we need now from the left vanishing point, we need a line coming through the station point. Now we need 90 degrees. Remember that? We need 90 degrees from our station point out to our eye level or, or our horizon line in this case. So I come back and get my 45 degree, 90 degree ruler and I set up 90 degrees because we need that 90 on our station point there coming back over and this gets it. Remember, you gotta lock that in. And where it ends, where it changes direction, that's where the station point is, right there. So now I've got my setup here for my right vanishing point and it's right there. So I'll put RVP over here for rug right there. Okay, now I'm set up. So what we can do now is draw back. If you were just freehand sketching, you could do that. But now we can draw back from the edge of what our rug will be to our vanishing point. Now we're good to go. Okay, so I want a pretty big rug out here. So maybe I can, you know, how deep do I want to make it? Maybe I'll make it, we'll keep it right in the cone. So I'll draw a little dot there so you can see it and I'll darken it up a little bit. So you can see that. There's our rug. Okay, so we'll take that and we'll do that. And then how deep do we want to make it along here? Maybe this, this rug will be this deep, maybe right there just slightly outside the cone. We'll put a dot there so you can see it and then I'll darken it in so you can see it right in through there. You can draw yours ultra light, remember that. Now from this point we need to go back to our left finishing point. Let me get my other ruler so it's longer through here. There's nothing wrong with coming outside the cone some. Matter of fact there's nothing wrong with coming outside the cone a lot. Just know that you're going to get more distortion if that's the look that you want in your composition. And the only way that you know how much distortion you're going to get is by experience, practice, trial, and error. Have fun with it. So, diminishment line that way and now from this point we go back to the rugs right vanishing point right through there and there we go. Right through here to here and there's our two point rug on our ground plane right there. There we go. Okay, so now we're cooking. So let's give it a little bit of detail and um, let's find its center point. How do we do that really quickly? We know that's centering X right through there and there. So we find its center right through there. There's its center. So we can take that, go back to the right vanishing point, find its center there and there and same thing with the left, right? there and there and we could put if we wanted to we could put some kind of design on it all right let's put some random designs on our rug let's just have a little fun with it and remember from our prior lessons where we had a baseline and then from that baseline we had some measurements on there equal and unequal measurements let's do that and Let's put a baseline here all the way across, good distance, and let's bring the center of the rug over all the way to that baseline. So we know where the center of uh, our rug is in our baseline there and there. So let's bring that over, touch this baseline, and let's do the same now, thing now with the end of it here. See how far it goes out in perspective. So we've got that there and there, okay. And let's do something fun a little bit. Let's do some equal and unequal, you know, kind of things. All right, so we can find the center of this by measuring it if we want, or we could bring another measuring X over and through here. But I don't want to. I want to make it unequal. I'm just going to put some unequal stripes on our rug. So I'm just going to make a mark here, then make an unequal mark there, right? Okay, let me pull in with the camera. So you can see that nice and cleanly. Make sure we get that. Sometimes my, there it goes, okay. Sometimes it's gotta be right over. Sorry for seeing my hand, but that's not a big deal. We're all just learning. All right, so you can see where I'm working my baseline here and I'm putting different marks on this baseline. And those are gonna, they're equal in their unequal spaces because I want some random little pattern design. I'm gonna do a bunch of little 
little lines here and we're all going to go back to they're all going to go back to that right vanishing point okay so i'm going to line up my ruler to the right vanishing point and through every tick or mark that's going to be a line now on this rug there and then there's another one there right and then there's a big gap between there there's going to be another one there okay Drop my remote control. All right, and there's going to be, let's see, where did I leave off at? Here. So you can do something random. You can kind of do this with me. There's a line there. Another line there. So it kind of gives a stripe pattern. And then a small one there. Okay. And then another one there. And we're just working through up to our halfway point on our rug right there and then there we are right there all right so that's the first the first one that we're going to work with now if we wanted to put we could continue on this line if you want more horizontals if you wanted something going back the other way you could draw along this baseline way back here you could bring our center point way way over do you see that it's going to kind of mark up and you can mark off this way now you're going to need a lot of space because now I should pull out the camera a little bit. Now you're going to need a lot of space if you wanted something to say from here to go horizontal this way, or back to the left finishing point, the opposite direction here. You could bring this line over and make marks on your line in through here, or you can just make them across here and kind of guesstimate too as well. But if you wanted to find your true center, how would we find our true center here? We just do a crossing X and there's our true center that way as well. I think I'm just gonna keep going with stripes. And if you wanted to make the same marks as here, you could just bring these measurements over there. I don't care, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna make different kind of, kind of stripe marks. I'm gonna make a couple of big ones and then a couple of small ones and then call it a day so we can, we can move on. But I wanted to use one of our lessons prior in this exercise too as well with, with our kind of our modern design rug. All right, so from that mark back to the right vanishing point, I'll draw another line. Then from this mark, there's a big there's a big amount of space, right? So let me pull in again so you can see that. There we go. Okay. That's it. And then we can start to see from this line, that's the next mark I'm gonna make. So this wasn't pre-planned. A lot of these lessons are for accuracy and this, this is just pre-planned design. And then there's a three, couple of three marks over here, there, and then there's another lined up to the right vanishing point, right? And then there's one more over there to give us, give us that rug right in through there. Okay, so we've got some, some uh, closer lines and some tighter lines to come in to give us a nice uh, rug design. Okay, so. I'm going to pull the camera angle out and we're going to pull this out. Now we're going to let's go a little further. I think that's probably good for now. Now let's make a one point table in our composition and let's put the table kind of, you know, inside the rug a little bit. Um, and then we'll pull the table back to the, uh, the center vanishing point here, center vision. This is the center point, and then we also call it the, the vanishing point in through here. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to sharpen my pencil here, and so we can keep our lines nice and tight. Take a moment to do that. That's important. Now, we could use this baseline as also a ground line for, for, for accurate measurements over a table. If we wanted our table to be a certain amount of units in length, maybe we'll do that. I'll, do, I'll make the marks in red. So this time we'll use, I'll use a full inch of demarcation. So this will be zero right here. And then I'll use a full inch. Whatever you're using, just be consistent. So there's one, two, three, four, five units and then over here one two three four and then five units in red on this ground line or baseline so that's one two three four five and then one 
two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's put a one point table down uh, now out here in uh, space. Okay, so what we can do now, we can just keep this table if we want right on our ground line. This will make it even, even easier. So maybe we could pull, we could make our table a little off center, make it a little bit longer to the right than the left. So let's make our table one, two, three, three units to the right. So right here. And let's make the table one, two, two units to the left here. So right there. So total of one, two, one, two, three, a total of five units in length. How about that? Okay. So let's do that first. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a little redder so you can see the table measurement here. Alright. So we've got that. Okay, so now we can measure if we wanted to how many units tall since that's our unit here. Um, we could do that from the bottom if it's if it's inch. That would also give us our elevation look too as well, which just right off our hand would be about one, two, three, four, almost five units in height if we wanted to do that. So we could bring it over here with, uh, where the edge of our table is going to be and I can put a quick vertical line up from here up to the or past the horizon line. We're not going to go past the horizon line. Then I can put my scaling back on and it's really just about five. I'm just going to call it five. One, two, three, four, and five. So we're at five. Now we know our elevation. I didn't plan it that way. It just happened that way. We're at five units elevation. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, and five there. Okay. So let's make the table top about three units now in height. So the legs are going to be about three units. So, so here's what I'll do. I think I'll do the entire table in um, red so you can see that. So we have a five unit table by, it's going to be a little bit more than three units because the end of the table is going to end at, th at three where it's, um, where the legs stop. We still have the top of the table to work with, so it'll be a little bit higher than that. So I'm going to bring a line over. There we go. And I'm going to bring a little thickness over about between, uh, it's, this is, this will be three and a half, so maybe three and a quarter of a thickness right there. Okay, we'll bring that over. There we go. Now we're going to bring over the other height on the right right back over through here. There we go. Okay. And then let's put some legs on this table. Let's, um, we'll, it's kind of, maybe we'll make it like a real modern table and we'll put like a waterfall ledge, meaning that the, the edge and the, the legs abut together. Let me pull in now. I think we can pull in even further so you can see that right there. Okay. So, and we'll make these about a quarter, the same thickness, in through here about a quarter of a full unit roughly just make it simple so now bring these up vertical stop where they meet and stop where they meet the bottom of the table right through there okay now we need some depth let's bring let's make our depth let's bring our depth to the vanishing point okay so we'll go back from the corners to our VP here and our VP to our corner there. All right, so now we have our depth in our composition. Okay, let's uh, now set in the depth. How deep do we want to make our table? Let's make it a little bit deeper than it is tall or wide. Remember, it's three units tall. It's five units wide. Let's make it seven units in depth. How do we do that? Well, we've got, we'll keep our, um, our 45, well, we need a 45 degree measuring point, first of all. And so we're going to, we're going to use it from this station point and I'll put it over here. So we'll come over and I'll use my router. Now that's the right vanishing point for our rug that we've already established. Now we need a 45 degree coming from our station point out to 
the, the station point out to our horizon line. So out here, I'll draw it red. See that? There's our measuring point right there at 45 degrees. I just got that in the camera. Lucky. All right, there we are right there. Okay. So that's what we're going to shoot for as we bring our measurement over. Now we got a couple things to do. We need, we're going to make it seven units in length, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. Then we need six and seven. So from this, this line, we need to bring this up to the tabletop. So I'll bring up a vertical. Then I'll bring up the edge of the table, a line over from right there to help us out. Then we'll go from here, you guessed it, right back to the 45 degree measuring point. Through there, through this point, over 45 to our 45, right through there where it touches right there is going to give us our seven unit table in perspective. Now we'll go over and we'll draw through and nice and horizontal and we've got our table set in there. So we're at five units length, three units high, and now we're going to be seven units deep. Okay, so let's put the back legs on our table now. So we can drive from our legs back to our vanishing point. So let's do that. So let's go from our left and our right leg in through here. We're going to keep this table pretty simple here and here and right there. So we go back to the vanishing point. Okay. Now we're going to bring down verticals from the end of the corners of our table here, right? And also, and we're going to bring that across and we're going to put that on the outside since that's the outside right there. Bingo, right there. And then we'll bring verticals across right through here, excuse me, horizontals across. Don't let me get ahead of myself there. And also a little bit higher, my pencil is right there and there. And then we'll bring our vertical up here and we'll keep these legs pretty flat like planes. They, could, they would have three dimensionality, but let's for the sake of argument just right now, keep them kind of flat, flat planes. We know that they would have a three dimensional point in through here, three dimensional point in through there, but we'll just leave them right now as flat planes. All right, so there we, go. we have our table. So uh, now what I want to do, I want to actually out, outline this a little bit darker in graphite. And so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back and so we don't waste time. If you want to outline yours in graphite, go for it. But I'm going to do that. We'll come, I'll cut, we'll come back, and then we'll add some uh, dimension to our table and put some objects on our table too. Hey, I wanted to show you something now that I've come back and I've darkened in the table a little bit. Uh, it's maybe it's still harder to tell, but it's graphite over the red, and then I darkened in the, 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 the random stripe design on the rug. Um, when I brought this line up and then brought it over to the measuring point for seven units deep, you might have asked, hey, why didn't he just do it from here? You can. I just established this height first, brought it over, but we could do it from here. It would go through here to the 45 degree measuring point. You can kind of see, see how that would be the same thing from here. I'd line up my ruler. It's a little bit off because of the dot, but right there would have been uh, where that seven unit table would, and then we just bring it over. It would just be on, would have been on the ground. But I just want, I raised it up because it's on the tabletop since the platform is higher. So that was the only difference. So if you were confused by that, I wanted to make sure that that was clear, clearer for you. Okay, so let's put a couple of books on our table, and then I'll draw. We'll do some. We'll do those in more formal perspective. But then we could put like maybe a, a bowl of fruit and maybe a cup of water or something, and we'll we'll get out of this lesson since we're we're through there. Now remember, we're seven units. Let's find our center so we can have our center so we can kind of place our books a little maybe a little cleaner here. We'll find our crossing X and our diagonal, and then right there is our center of our. Um, Composition. All right, so we'll put a couple of books in through here. So maybe, maybe I should make them a little different color. Maybe I'll make the books um, blue. And so let me sharpen up my blue a little bit, so we can see that. You can catch your breath a little. 
there. All right, so we'll bring my blue over, and then we'll start in with an angle of a book, and maybe we want, I'll put this first book kind of over here, and it'll be a two-point book, by the way, so I'll start with an angle over here, about right here. We'll put the angle of the book. Now we'll go all the way over to the horizon line or eye level, and that's going to be the right vanishing point. RVP, make sure that we can see that. Let me pull this out just a little bit so you can see that. There we go. There's our RVP for our book. And so I set in my aesthetic angle. I just arbitrarily did that. Now remember, we have to come back through the station point right at 45. And, or excuse me, 90 degrees in through here and then out. So we, this is this line helps us line up our triangle. So we'll line in at 90 now and we'll come back out in blue. I'll show you that. Okay, there'll be a lot of lines and that's going to be, well let me tighten this up right here. I missed that over. And that's going to be where we need our left finishing point for our book, LVP for our book. So now I know where to go. So from the corner of our book here, which is kind of a rectangular cube, we'll go back to the left vanishing point through there. Okay. And so now I'll maybe make this book about this thick. Okay. Right in through there. And then we'll bring up just kind of a reasonable height for our book here. Maybe about right here seems pretty good. Maybe it's a big tome of collection of stories or illustrations or something, who knows, and we'll bring this back over to the left finishing point. I'll thrust a little line there and then I'll cut it off where I want the end of the book to be, about right there, nice vertical. True two point because the table, the table's in one point, remember it's level, so we're in one point and we're using a little two point. Now we'll go back from this point of our book, right now back to the right finishing point for our book, which is in blue, it's this one right here. Okay, we'll go back over to here, draw the line to get that nice and set in. I'll darken this one in, make it a little bit longer. All right, so let's keep the book on the table. Let's keep it a bit right, about right there in perspective. Okay, and now we need to go from this point back to the left finishing point. So I'll draw a line, line up my ruler over a little bit and then the same thing from this corner over to our book's right vanishing point. And then we have our first book on our table, right? And it's a nice clean 90 degree angle from our station point, our, our vision looking into our composition. Here we are up here looking into our composition and we're about five feet in elevation looking down. Remember, it's a three foot table. If it's a five foot tall table, it'd be right here at our eye level. So we're at about five feet. Maybe we're a short person like me. I'm only five six. So it could be a short person or we could be slightly sitting down or, or slightly bending down, but our head is straight and locked in. Okay, let's put another book uh, on the other side, maybe over here somewhere. And then I'll put a bowl of fruit right in through here and I'll do that freehand as well. I'm going to pull in, I'm going to pull in just a little bit, maybe further. And so we can see, so let's put another book. I'll do it in blue here. So I'll get an angle that I want for my book, uh, 45 and 90 degree angle. So let's put our book maybe over here. We'll set it in, uh, let's see, maybe right here. Okay, there we go. And so I'm going to keep on going to the horizon line. And so there, that will be the right vanishing point for our book here, our next book. Okay. And so this needs to come to here, to the station point. I'm going to draw it lightly through our objects and then get a little bit darker back in through here. Now, now this creates a conundrum. This is a fun thing, is that we don't have enough paper now for our 90 degree. Now, this is why I wanted to do this, is to show you a little bit, is that here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to draw this over, okay? And I'm going to put an arrow over here, and it says, okay, you can see it over here. You can't see the arrow, but this is to the 90 degree for our left vanishing point 
right through there. So what I do is estimate, I could bring a long string over. It's probably got another 10 or 12 inches going this way to get all the way over. Let me pull out a little bit so you can see what that looks like, what I've still got going. Now I've got to still jive in. I've got to find and estimate between here's my horizon line over where this line and where they meet up. That's the vanishing point. So I'm going to guesstimate and I'm just going to guesstimate with the end of my book. So there's a little guessing that goes on. I just want you to keep that in mind. Sometimes you can't get them all on unless you have a big rolled piece of paper or a big ruler, all that kind of matter. So let's keep that in mind as I'm going to guesstimate about the end of this book. And I broke my lead, so let me sharpen my pencil back. Okay. All right. And would you know it, the lead won't sharpen well. There we go. So it's important to get really nice and keep nice pencil sharpeners handy. And then if you're doing videos, it's good to sharpen them beforehand, right? So you have enough stock of them. Sorry about that. So Okay, so now I'm going to come back and I'm going to guesstimate this angle here for the edge of this book where it feels like it would meet up with the vanishing point. So it's going to feel about right there. So I'm going to put the length of my book about right here. Okay, right in through there. Then I'm going to bring up a couple of verticals for the thickness of our book here and also now here. Okay, and then that's going to go back to my guesstimated vanishing point about right there. It's okay to guesstimate or it's or if you really want to be truly accurate you'd have to get a much longer ruler or a string to do that. So now we have our right vanishing point here which I know where we're going to right there for this book here and we'll go back to the vanishing point here okay so let's keep the book on the table let's bring it way in since it's only halfway that would be about three and a half units and so this book would be that's a really pretty big book but you can see it so I'll bring up a little vertical there tighten this up so you can see it here you can see it here and then I'll go back to my guesstimated 90 degree vanishing point from this vanishing point over but in perspective just keep that in mind right about there again you're learning to and the reason why I know how to do this is that we can estimate based on a good understanding of perspective to give good guesstimations if we need to okay alright so I'm gonna color in these books so we can see them there might be a cover here All right, and then there's a cover maybe this flaps over and this could be the name of a book here and this is a big book on drawing and then the same thing there's a cover here but it's flipped over the other way so we would see pages out here okay like so okay so Let's now finish up our drawing and let's put a bowl of fruit in the middle and let's bring this in a little bit, about right there. And let's say how deep I want our, 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 uh, our bowl to be. So <clears throat> we can bring up our units of measure and we can put them on the table with some marks right here. We can come up and say, okay, there's this mark for, this is one unit right two units here okay then three units here and so I'm going to use these three to drive back now to the vanishing point I don't want our bowl to be too terribly big so I'm going to use this unit here right and this unit here so those are three units of length they're probably about a foot so maybe a bowl a reasonable bowl is probably about a unit right wide, maybe a little bit bigger. So I know that this bowl of fruit, if I put it about right here, okay, you can see it in my composition, is about in American uh, measurements in English, 12, about 12 units or 12 inches and maybe a little bit longer. So I'm going to put my bowl right in through here. So I just have to be careful when I draw my lips and make sure it's open enough 
so that we're looking slightly down on it. And so the bowl I'm going to make is probably going to be about 14 or 15 inches in length. And that seems pretty reasonable, right, for a bowl of fruit. Since we're being so analytical for now, and it's going to be about right. Here's my lips for the bowl, and the bowl is going to come down, go behind the book a little bit, and then we'll see the bowl part right in through there. We won't see the very bottom of it. Now I can bring in some oranges, and oranges are probably about, they're not six inches across, maybe about three or four, so that feels right that they could be that big. Maybe we'll put a bunch, some oranges in through here, or they could be apples too, and they feel that they would be nicely tucked in there at about that size, maybe one, one or two more. Some some stems and maybe a few leaves in there and we've got now our bowl of fruit and of course you know I freehanded that but I used a little bit of rational thought to make sure that we worked on and got their sides in there too as well. Okay so I think we're there now you could put chairs in here if you want if you want to put chairs go for it you could put a chair in through here a chair in through there but I think I want to leave off this lesson and we'll get to our last one so let's pull out and review now what we did a little bit. So again, we established uh, our fundamental four, then we established our cone right, and then we established where we wanted our rug, and then we developed a baseline with uh, some asymmetrical patterning in our rug to give it kind of a modern feel, right? Then we established along the baseline equal units, or a ground line, measuring line, and then we made our table three units so it was three units tall, and then we made the table five units wide, and then we made the table seven units deep, and we used the tabletop as a way to find our depth by bringing up a ground line. Remember, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven up here to the same plane as the corner of our table, and then over to our 45 degree measuring point to put our table in. So you would now know how to more accurately put in a figure. So if you wanted your figure six foot tall, you'd make more one more mark up and through here, and then you would have a, me, a reference point from this measuring to put a six foot figure any, anywhere you want, or five, six, or vice versa, and you know where to put your chair. So the purpose of this lesson is to continue to develop your visual acumen and your skill with linear perspective so that when you draw in a more relaxed way you get more accuracy, more structure, structure and more believability with your finished final outcome. We also had what was pretty unique 190 degree angle where we could not get that in the picture plane, which happens more often than not. So we had to guesstimate a little bit on that book, and it came out looking, I think, pretty well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. That was exercise 14. That was a rug, a table, and a couple of books and some still life objects. Now we're going to go on to exercise 15, which will be the most complex exercise of this, this section, which is section 1, and that will conclude of uh, section one of formal linear perspective. Congratulations, you're almost there. Hang in there. See you next. Bye.